Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. If you always wanted to build your own keyboard but you didn't know where to start, well you're in luck. Because this is the first of four videos where I show you step by step all the different aspects of building your own DIY keyboard. This video will cover all the basics of how you need to wire up the switch matrix, what are your controller options and how you can uh, create your very first PCB. I'll go over everything in very much detail, so even if you're a beginner, you've never built your own PCB, you've never really done any electronics projects, this should still be easy enough to follow, that you, at the end of the day, can create your own PCB, have it manufactured and have a working keyboard. And the best part is that if you've never designed a PCB, well, this video sponsor is PCBWay, and you can get up to 10 by 10 centimeters, 10 pieces, double-sided silk screen, everything for just $5. And if you have never ordered from them before, I have a coupon code down below that will give you five bucks off, which means that your first order will be completely free. You just have to pay for shipping. So if that doesn't sound like a good deal, then I don't know what is. More about them later. Before we hop over to the computer, into the software in just a second, I want to just give you a little bit of an overview. I am by no means an expert uh, in PCB design or in uh, keyboards. I just have built quite a few keyboards over the years and uh, feel like uh, I want to share all the different things I learned with you so that you can hopefully get started a little bit easier. Essentially, what you need for your own mechanical keyboard is some Mechanical key switches, you've probably heard of them. There's a plethora of options out there and you can get almost all of them individually as well. So you can uh, use uh, Cherry MX switches, you can use Gatoron switches, you can use Alp switches, whatever you want. And then the other important part, of course, is the controller. Somehow these switches uh, need to be read out and then uh, the letters that you actually want to type need to be sent to the computer. In this video, we will just use an Arduino Pro Micro as that is the very easiest uh, way to get started. But in later videos, I will show you how you can uh, integrate a controller directly onto your PCB instead of using an Arduino. I will also have a dedicated video all about the different software options. Uh, you can either write your own code from hand, which is if you just have like a couple of key switches that is fairly easy, or you can use a dedicated open source uh, keyboard software such as QMK that will allow you to uh, have super complicated setups very easily and uh, gives you all the features you would ever want. And since it has gotten very easy, we will even integrate some uh, individually addressable RGB uh, lighting for every key uh, in the very first keyboard as well. The way that this works is that you essentially have all of your LEDs daisy chained uh, and they have like a di small digital controller on them. So you just send a signal to the first LED, hey, sixth LED, turn green. And then uh, this gets passed on through all the LED and then a sixth LED will be, hey, that's me and then turn screen. So all you need is a single pin to control all of your LEDs. But now without further ado, let's hop over to the computer and I'll show you the schematic and how you need to wire up everything. So the software I'm using here is Eagle by Autodesk. There are also other options like uh, KiCad that are quite popular. I just like using Eagle. It is also uh, free in, in its uh, basic version and free for students. And it's very easy to use. Uh, I find it much easier to use than something like Ultium Designer, which might have more functionality, but especially for starting out, Eagle or KiCad are going to be great. Controls are going to be mostly similar, uh, slight differences, but for the most part, anything I show here will also apply to KiCad. So as you can see, I've already placed a couple of components in here. Here we can see the Arduino uh, Pro Micro that we are uh, going to use. The reason we're using a Pro Micro is uh, the microcontroller on it is an 80 mega 32 u 4 which uh, the great feature about it is that it has an integrated USB controller. This means that it has directly two pins that are the USB uh, that goes out and means you can just have more control over it. For example, on the Arduino Nano or Arduino Uno family, the microcontroller and the USB controller are separate. Well, now this will still work uh, with the newer versions of the keyboard library. Uh, you can see here all the supported ones. However, I like sticking with the micro uh, as it's just simpler. And if you're using QMK, uh, which is a different uh, firmware, uh, then uh, having an Arduino that is using the ITMaker 32U4 processor is a lot simpler to use. Other ones that have that would be the Arduino Leonardo or the Arduino Micro. Uh, the Pro Micro is just the smaller version. If we have a look at uh, the pinout here for it, uh, you can see it's just like any other Arduino. You have a USB port and a bunch of uh, data ports. Uh, you can use 
basically all of them uh, for your keyboard projects and if this uh, smaller Arduino Pro Micro is too small and does not have enough pins for you you can always step up to the Arduino Micro and that one has basically all of uh, the pins that the 80 Mega 32 U4 offers uh, given out to you. But let's uh, go back uh, to Ego. Here is the chip and here I've already placed uh, some switches. Now these symbols are quite a bit more complicated than a switch symbol needs to be. Actually the switch itself is just this little part up here. The reason why I have all of this other stuff is because I actually uh, made a little library with all of the footprints and uh, things that you might use uh, and uh, this symbol already has the LEDs integrated. Here you can see some of the components of the library. Here is the Arduino uh, Pro Micro that uh, we are using. Uh, it has the footprint and uh, the schematic uh, file here. The key switch here uh, is not just the switch, but it is actually compatible with Ch Cherry MX. It is uh, compatible with ALP switches and it is compatible with the uh, chalk switches, uh, which is uh, quite nice. And also has a spot down here for an addressable LED. And more specifically, the SK6812 Mini E LED. And the great thing about that, it is just a lot easier to solder by hand as uh, any of the 2812 uh, variety. And the way it works is that you mount it from behind, actually. So there's a little uh, cutout in the PCB and the LED mounts from behind and then shines through it, which means that even after you have soldered the switch in place, you still have full access to uh, desolder and resolder the LED if anything should break or you need to modify something. They are also very easily solderable by hand, uh, although they are technically a surface mount component, you can easily solder this by hand. Otherwise, uh, for this keyboard, we will use just through hole components. So for the resistors, uh, instead of using something like an 0805 uh, package, we will actually use a through hole package, meaning you can just use a regular through hole resistor. If you want to know more about uh, surface mount components, stay tuned for some of the more advanced uh, tutorials in this series. But now let's get back to uh, this circuit. Somehow we need to con connect these switches to our uh, microcontroller. Now the easiest way would just to uh, connect uh, all these switches to an individual pin and the other side of the switch to ground. And then when we press the switch, the pin gets uh, pulled low to ground and we can activate the input pull up, uh, meaning that if it's not switched to ground, it will be high. This will work great if you have just six switches like I have here. However, if you have a big old keyboard with 50 or 100 switches, then you will quickly run out of pins. And microcontrollers that have that many pins are super expensive and it's complete overkill. So instead, what basically all keyboards use is a matrix arrangement. To explain to you how this works, I'm actually going to use this little uh, graphic here that I did not make myself, uh, but I just uh, found on Google, but it, I feel like it explains it really nicely. You can see here, 4x4 four four is switches arranged in a matrix, and as you can see, one side of the switch is connected horizontally, and the other side is connected vertically. What this means is that instead of needing 16 pins uh, to uh, know all of uh, these uh, switch states, you actually just need 4 plus 4, so 8. Now in our example before, uh, instead of needing 6, we only need 5, which is not really a big save. But if you have, for example, a 10 by 10 matrix, you would need 100 inputs. However, if you uh, put it in a matrix, then you only need 20, which is a saving of a factor of 5. Now, the way that we actually read out these switches, since we cannot just simply read all of them at the same time, is that uh, the horizontal lines in this graphic are actually not inputs uh, to our microcontroller, but outputs. And if we want to read out uh, the switches, all of them by usually all these outputs uh, will be set to low at first. And then we will set one row of them to high. Then this is indicated here by the color. And if none of the switches are pressed, this will go high, but all of the inputs will still read low because there is nothing else. However, if uh, one of the switches is pressed, then uh, current will flow through here and then the high voltage will also be shown as this uh, input here. If two of the switches were pressed in this row, two of the inputs would be high. Then after uh, all of the inputs have read, been read out, this uh, row gets turned to low again and the next one put, gets put to high. And if any of the switches here are pressed, then you, you will see this at the inputs. Now, 
you might think that what if I press the switch really quickly and uh, it was reading a different line, uh, then my switch won't be read. But th this uh, cycle here is actually happening thousands of times uh, per second. So even if you press the switch as fast as you possibly can, it's probably going to uh, be read a few dozen times anyhow. An arrangement like uh, this, uh, having all the switches connected in a matrix like this, works great, but there is a bit of a flaw. If you just press one or at most two keys at the same time, it will always uh, read out the correct results. However, if you were to read out, uh, press three keys at the same time, you will get something that is called ghosting. You might have heard that uh, in keyboards before, uh, manufacturers uh, advertising their anti-ghosting uh, technology, and what this means is that uh, they have added a diode to it, basically. But first, let me explain why this is an issue. Let's have this example here again. We are currently reading out this top row, and this switch here is pressed. This means that not just this top row is now high, but also this column is pulled high. If now also, for example, this switch here uh, would be pressed, that would mean that current can also flow into here, and all of a sudden this entire row is also high. And this still would not be an issue yet, but if, for example, uh, this key here over here is also pressed, because the current flows through here, up the switch again, through this row, and then now through this switch, all of a sudden this column here also gets read as pressed. However, the row that we are actually reading out here only, this switch is pressed, and this switch here is not pressed, which would correspond to this output. So although this switch here is not pressed, the software will actually think it is, because uh, the current went all around here and through a different switch. I hope this is not too confusing. The way to uh, mitigate that is to just add a diode for every switch, and that basically means that the current can uh, flow down here, but the current cannot uh, go back up through a switch into the row again. And for the sake of uh, time, uh, I did not show you a step-by-step -step how uh, you do that. Uh, just quickly, if you have not used Eagle before, to add a new part, this is this button here. And here you have a whole bunch of parts. And for a beginner, this is by far the hardest part, finding your component in all of these. And that's why I gave you, uh, give you uh, this uh, library that I made with all the parts that you will need for this. You can find the... You can find the Arduino in here uh, and uh, the diodes here and everything else we need. And this way you don't have to uh, mess with all of these parts and find the right footprints. To import the library, you can uh, click here on Open Library Manager. And uh, uh, in design, you see what is here, but it, uh, available, you can click Browse, select the library, and uh, then uh, it will show up here and you can use it. Then when you have the component here, let's say the diode, and we want the through hole here, you can see the preview. You click on OK, and then you get the part here, and you can place it anywhere. Place as many as you want. And then to connect them, you can use the net, and you can uh, connect them up. But I will uh, delete this again here. Another thing that you can see I did, I didn't uh, connect these uh, columns and rows uh, directly uh, to this uh, component here. And the way that why I did this is just so it's a bit more easy to read. Instead of uh, connecting this column one here directly to pin two, I went ahead, uh, right clicked on this uh, net here and gave it name of column one. And then I made a little line here uh, at this pin, also right clicked, uh, gave it a name of uh, column one, and when you then press OK, it will ask you if you want to connect these two nets. If you say yes, and then uh, this is essentially connected, although it, there's no line going between. You can also see here how I have uh, the diodes uh, set in here. This here is my switch, so we have uh, the columns here, and uh, they go to the rows. Now, it doesn't really matter which way around you put these uh, diodes, as long as they're the same everywhere. You just have to uh, then tell the software which way around they are. You could also, uh, instead of putting it after the switch uh, going to the row, you can have it uh, going to the column. That This is just the way I did it here, but it really, you have some design freedom there. Then finally, uh, let's talk quickly about these LEDs. I've already mentioned that uh, these are addressable LEDs, meaning that they don't just have the LED themselves, but they also have a little microchip on there. That means you can communicate with them digitally. 
to the Arduino here, there is just a simple pin, the LED pin here, uh, for me it's uh, pin 7 here. And then you need to put a, a run 360 ohm resistor, uh, anything between 3 and 400 will work. In line with that, that is just uh, a requirement of uh, the LEDs. And then you connect this pin to the first data in uh, pin of the LED and then from, you go from data out to data in and so forth. You of course also need to uh, connect these LEDs to ground and to plus 5 volts. The plus 5 volts you can actually directly get from the VCC pin here from the Arduino. Just make sure when you have these LEDs, if you just have 6 of them, this will be perfectly fine. But if you have a look here, uh, this VCC pin is, has a maximum of 500 milliamps. And that is also the maximum of uh, the USB 2.0 specification. So you really do not want to exceed 500 milliamps. Actually, you, you do want to stay uh, significantly below that, otherwise uh, your USB port might throw errors. So uh, staying below 400 is a good idea. Now you can get uh, these LEDs uh, with different power requirements, uh, but if I remember correctly, uh, they are somewhere between uh, 20 uh, to 40 milliamps, uh, which if you just have six, that's not an issue. But if you have 50, then that will definitely blow your power budget. But there is a workaround for that and you can actually limit in software how bright to get. And these LEDs are really bright. So even at 50% brightness, they are plenty bright enough and they require a lot less power if you limit them to, for example, 50% or if you have fewer, you can go a bit higher. They also do get quite warm if you uh, power them 100%. So that's just something to keep in mind. You will also see uh, different uh, circuits for these LEDs and include capacitors and various other things. But for a very easy, just starting out circuit, connecting it like that, the only thing you really need to add is this resistor. So now that we have arrived at uh, this circuit, if you wanted to, you could just get some switches, solder them up by hand in a matrix like that. That is what I did for my first keyboard. And if you just want to try it out real quick, you have an Arduino in hand. That is what I would recommend for you. But actually, if you want to get this, uh, like make this or make a slightly larger one, having a PCB made is just so much more convenient as getting all of these uh, lines soldered up correctly and not making any mistakes is actually uh, harder than you might think. And if you are intimidated by making PCBs, don't be. Uh, I provided you with all the footprints already, so all you need to do is uh, connect them up. And uh, let's switch over to uh, the PCB here. This is the finished one. But actually, I want to quickly just give you some pointers on how you can get started. After drawing the schematic, you can click on this uh, button here to switch to uh, the board view. And if you haven't created a file for that already, it will uh, create one for you. And uh, this is how it looks uh, when you switch over. Now, this is not a PCB yet. Here, this yellow outline is uh, just the suggestion it gives you. And here you can see all of your components on the other side. Now, first step will be to arrange all of them. You can just kind of click and drag them around to wherever you uh, would like them and uh, kind of ar arrange them. These little yellow lines here represent uh, the connections in between them and this way you can uh, kind of know uh, where everything is going. If you are however building a keyboard you probably don't just kind of want to roughly uh, place these uh, wherever uh, but actually properly align them. And to properly align stuff the first thing you want to do is up here click on uh, this button here which is the grid and there you can set what units you are using. Kind of the default unit for uh, PCBs is mils, which is thousands of an inch. Uh, however, I uh, work in metric, so I basically always switch this to metric, put the course one uh, to one millimeter, and then the alternate, which is kind of defined uh, to 0 0.1. And uh, actually, uh, let's also uh, display uh, a grid here that makes it a bit easier. And now this grid is in uh, one millimeter increments. And if I uh, move these switches around, uh, they will by default uh, snap to uh, one millimeter increments. Or if I hold down Alt, then I can more finely uh, position them in the alternate uh, positioning. So 0 0.1 millimeters uh, as I specified now. You can also right click on the components, go to properties, and this will uh, pull up the thing. And here you have the X and Y position. And that is actually how I uh, place my key switches since the spacing for a standard keyboard between key switches is 19 millimeters. So I'll just kind of place the first one wherever I want it, uh, note down the X and Y coordinates, and then update all of the other ones to have these exact coordinates. 
Then afterwards, uh, the diodes uh, here. By the way, if you want to rotate a part, you can uh, while you are moving it around uh, with uh, left click and drag. You can right click uh, to rotate it, and then uh, the diodes you can just kind of uh, put in place. Now this uh, white outline here is the switch outline. So since we are using through hole components, we want to make sure uh, that uh, we place uh, them outside. We are also currently working here on the top layer. So if you want to um, move some components on a different layer, you can switch here between uh, top and bottom. And while you are moving a component by clicking middle mouse button, it will move it to from top to bottom layer and vice versa. It doesn't really matter as much right now since we are working with through-hole components, but for example, uh, the silk screen will then be on the other side. By default, the, the way I have set it up is that the Arduino here, uh, Arduino Pro Micro and the outline will be printed on top uh, on the top side since this is where you will be uh, putting your Arduino and then the pin designations I actually uh, have on the bottom side of the board. Uh, since on the top side you will have the designations on the Arduino itself and then on the bottom side uh, just for troubleshooting or if you want to connect anything else I put some labels there. What you can also see here is uh, the layout for the LEDs. As you can see you have a ground VCC which is 5 volts, a data in and data out and you just need to connect that. The yellow low cutout here is what will actually be a cutout of the board and this little circle here is the marker for where the ground pin is. On the LEDs themselves they have a little notch on one of the legs and a little notch uh, on the plastic housing so this way you will know how to orient them. You can also see that uh, currently you are getting some uh, dashed lines here. What this means is that uh, the software thinks that these pads are too close to this cutout. And that is basically something that is limited by the manufacturing process. And if you want to alter the default settings, which are very conservative, you can click down here on DRC. This stands for Design Rule Check. If you click on here, you get all of the design rules here. And you can change things, for example, how thick of your PCB is. Now, this does not really matter for this one, but if you were to export this later into a 3D file uh, to import it into Fusion, for example, uh, this will be the thickness that the PCB will be. What we have here is uh, clearance. And 6 mil clearance is actually the default for PCB way and most other manufacturers as well. Uh, that means that uh, the minimum distance between two lines is 6 mils. Now, these are not millimeters, but the uh, thousands of an inch. And that, that is, uh, I think, a bit over a 0.1 millimeter, so very small. Uh, you can use an online calculator if you want to uh, convert it to uh, more sensible units. Uh, but here, uh, the difference uh, that we want to look for uh, for these pads here is actually the copper to dimension uh, size. By default, it is set to 40 mil, uh, but PCB way can actually uh, manufacture down to uh, 20 mil by default, I believe. So uh, if you change this uh, down to uh, 20 mil, that will get rid of uh, these little errors here. Generally, you want to stay as far away from these minimums as possible. But for this uh, case here, uh, we do need uh, these uh, pads as close to this uh, cutout as possible, since uh, that is how uh, these LEDs work. But otherwise, you want to generally keep your traces uh, further than the 6 mil apart from each other. Also, you want to tend to keep them a bit thicker than the 6 mil, just so it's a bit easier for them to manufacture and that will uh, also be a less risk of it not working in the end. Here uh, for a uh, minimum drill diameter, uh, the default is 0 0.35, which is uh, once again slightly conservative. Uh, without any egg, paying any extra PCB way could go down to 0 0.3. Uh, and uh, with paying extra, you can go down as low as 0 0.1, but it really does not matter uh, that much uh, whether you use 0 0.3 or 0 0.35 uh, millimeters. The place where this is most applicable would be the vias, which if you don't know what a via is, it's basically if you connect, uh, you have a trace that is going on the top of the PCB, and then you want to move to the bottom of the PCB to continue tracing it, you have a little hole that is plated, uh, which is called a via, that connects the two. If you have a complicated design, you will need quite a few of those vias, and the smaller you can make them, the less space they take up. So uh, I generally like to uh, use a 0 0.3 or 0 0.35 millimeter uh, via diameter, and this is basically where this minimum hole diameter is most applicable. Otherwise, the holes for the uh, pins, they will all be much larger. 
Then lastly, uh, to change the dimension of your PCB, you can just kind of uh, move these lines around here and uh, cl click and drag them, or once again, you can right click them to put in uh, exact dimensions. And if you want to round over the quarter, you can use this miter tool here. And by default, it's set to uh, like 45 degrees, but you can also go to the round and uh, select your radius here. I like to use uh, two millimeters. Uh, and then when you click a corner, it will uh, put a radius there and that just makes your PCB slightly nicer to handle and looks slightly more professional as well. You can also do things like adding text here and uh, a bunch of other things. The only last thing that you might want to do is uh, a ground pour, which basically means that uh, it will put a ground layer everywhere where there is nothing else. The way you do that is actually you, you make a uh, polygon here. You just kind of make something roughly uh, all around and you can see that after you change the 45 to a uh, round you might want to change that back for uh, traces and after you uh, fill the shape you want to give it a signal name and for ground pour just type in gnd which will make it ground and after you hit ratsness here it will automatically pour ground everywhere where there is nothing else so it will uh, uh, make sure that uh, you do not connect the ground uh, to something you don't want, but it, but uh, if this was now on the bottom side, uh, it would connect it to this ground pad, but not the other ones. And after you have spent some time arranging and uh, connecting everything, this is roughly how it looks. Now one quick tip for uh, connecting everything on something this small, it doesn't really matter uh, how you go about it, but I like to designate uh, one of the two layers as horizontal and as one as vertical. Uh, so here I have blue is the bottom, uh, I have the bottom layer as horizontal and the top layer as vertical. And this just means that you have to use less vias uh, if you arrange it like that, as you will not have as many things crossing over. But you can see I still uh, have a couple of vias here that uh, I need uh, to get everything nicely connected. Also, this is how it uh, looks without uh, the ground pour. And if I hit rat's nest here, then you can see that uh, it puts the ground pour. And uh, this is uh, how it will be in the end. And if we uh, switch down to the bottom here, you can see uh, how the ground pour connected uh, to ground. And this means you don't actually have to connect the grounds to each other. However, what might happen is that the ground pour is only connected here, like this one. And uh, this means that ground uh, is connected to everything here, but it's not actually connected to any of the other ground pins. So one way to get around this is to just add a via here, call it ground and uh, connect the top and the bottom. And uh, this then allows you to use the top ground pour as well to uh, basically get all the grounds connected. If you want to get a preview of how your PCB is going to look, not in kind of a schematical view, but in more of a physical view, you can click on manufacturing and Eagle will give you a little uh, preview of how it will look. Now you can sadly uh, change the silk screen color, uh, but this uh, gives you a good idea of top and bottom, uh, how everything will look once you get it manufactured. Once you're happy with this, you can then uh, go ahead uh, to this little factory uh, icon up here, the CAM processor. And uh, this is what you use uh, to create the files that PCBWay or your other uh, board house will use uh, to manufacture them. They also called Gerbil files and that's just the file format. You don't really have to change much of anything in here. Uh, the defaults are pretty much uh, good. You can uh, kind of get a preview, for example, what your different layers uh, will look like in here. But if you use uh, the library that I provide to you, you don't need to change anything here. What I like to do is just uh, take this here to export it as a zip. This will already put in a zip file for you uh, that you can then directly upload. So let's uh, do here export as a zip, click on process job and you can uh, select where you want to save it. Let's call this. Uh, and then uh, it is already exported. Then to uh, get it, the PCB manufactured, we can hop over to PCBWay, the sponsor of this video. And here you can uh, get all of your uh, PCBs, assembly, also 3D printing and other manufacturing services. But what we will do, we will go to PCB instant quote. In here, we have to just select a couple of different things. For one, we need to put in uh, the size. And for that, we can uh, hop over to our Eagle design again. And we want uh, the X and Y dimensions. So here I will uh, just, uh, Check here, the width is uh, 76.5 and the height 
is free. So we can uh, type in by 40 and the quantity, uh, you can choose five, you can choose 10, uh, the price is the same. So let's choose 10 because more is always better. And then down here, uh, most of this, you can just uh, leave default. Uh, what you can change here is uh, the silk screen color, uh, but default is green. Uh, some people like this. I'm not a huge fan. I usually uh, like to go for black, but for uh, this time I actually went for red since uh, this is more of a trial PCB. I wanted to try out some of the, the other colors. So I uh, chose red here. And uh, one other thing uh, that you might want to do down here, it does cost another $3. So uh, right now, as you can see, it is uh, just $5 uh, to get the manufactured. And with the coupon code for $5 off, it will be completely free. But if you don't uh, put this little option, which costs another $3, they will actually uh, put on the silk screen the, your order number. It's just easier for them. Uh, but if you do not want this because uh, you want your board to look super clean, you can check this. It costs an extra three bucks, but I feel like it's worth it. But that's up to you, whether uh, having your order number on there bothers you or not. Then all you have to do is uh, select your shipping options in here. Uh, as you can see, uh, the default is somewhat expensive, uh, but if you click on it, there are various options depending on how fast you want it. You can get it super fast with DHL, or if you have a bit more uh, time, you can also get it much cheaper. This will obviously also depend on where in the world you live. When we then save this to cart, Uh, it will ask us for the Gerber files. And this here is uh, where we then upload uh, the zip file. Click on submit order now and uh, you will get a confirmation of them after they have looked at your files. Make sure that everything is correct, uh, like in the sense of the export uh, worked correctly. And then you can also get a preview of how your PCB will look with the correct colors and they will start manufacturing. If there are any issues, you can easily just talk to support and they will gladly help you out and they are very understanding and uh, can uh, help you uh, if there's anything that's unclear. Now I hope you found it interesting how you can easily get your very first PCB made and I think it is not all that complicated and if you I still have issues, you can check out some other uh, tutorials on YouTube uh, for Eagle or CatCat or whatever you're using. and get your first PCB made. It really is a great feeling when you can then go ahead and assemble it. But before uh, I show you more of that, I just want to give a quick preview of the next video where we will build a slightly more advanced uh, PCB, where we are actually going to include uh, the microcontroller directly on the PCB, which requires a couple of extra components, but uh, this allows us to have a much tighter PCB where there's not really any extra uh, thing on the side and we'll also use all surface mount components uh, including USB-C ports and if you want to know how you can actually do all of that then stay tuned for the next video. But now after you have received your uh, package from PCBWay then you can go ahead take the PCBs out of the box admire them as they usually are really beautiful and assembling is very straightforward. Uh, I like to uh, start with uh, the smaller through-hole components, uh, so putting all in all the diodes and the resistor. Quite straightforward, if you've ever soldered anything, this should not be anything new to you. And uh, for the Arduino, just make sure that uh, the components of it are facing upwards, uh, as this is the orientation that you need to put it in. And you can either use a, a socket for it uh, with some pins, or you can solder it directly with some pins. Uh, depending on uh, how confident you are in it. Then for the LEDs, uh, you want to just place them from behind, uh, put them on there, and you can easily solder them by hand. Uh, no need uh, to use solder paste for that. And uh, same with the switches. After you've assembled the PCB, of course, software is the next part. Uh, but as this video is already really long, I do not want to get into this. And there will be actually a separate video where I show you all the different options. Uh, the short of it is either you can, since this is an Arduino, you can program it like any Arduino and use the keyboard library to send keyboard commands. And if you just want to kind of experiment with it and know all of it, uh, this is what I would recommend. But if you want a more fully featured uh, keyboard, you can use software like QMK which is open source, you can uh, set up 
your keyboard uh, layouts in there you can set up the rgb and a bunch of really advanced features that is really cool and then your uh, keyboard will actually enumerate as a keyboard when you plug into windows windows will think it's a keyboard and not an arduino uh, but to do that you also need to uh, flash that onto your microcontroller but i will show all of that in the video about the software so i hope this video helped you out uh, in learning how to build your very first pcb and if you want to know more make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the future parts and if you have any more questions, leave them down in the comments and I will try to get back to you. With that said, thank you guys for watching and until next time.